So hello friends and welcome to another video. I totally look like a thumb right now and it's because I don't have any makeup on. I just literally threw my hair in a braid after I showered so it looks like it's matted to my head and I don't have any self tanner on because I'm about to go get an airbrush spray tan right now. It's besides the point. We're going to get started with this video and you probably already know from the title but today I'm going to do a Q&A and I just thought I would do it as I go through my day, one, I know you guys really like these. I think they're a lot more entertaining than a normal Q&A, unless it's a wine Q&A, which you guys seem to love, and I'll do another one soon. But I also don't really have time to, like, sit down and film a Q&A, so this is what we're going to do. Um, I asked a bunch of questions on my Instagram, um, like, last week, and I got a ton. I couldn't answer them all there, so I'm just going to answer the remaining ones here. First question, best self-tanner, just because it goes with this whole deal airbrush and I know it's expensive um but I haven't put on like lotion self tanner in a long time when I did I used Saint Tropez um but it's really hard to get everywhere and to make it even so I went to eye tan for a really long time which is fine but I found that it streaked a lot it would like bleed everywhere all over my sheets and it only lasted like four or five days with how much I like sweat and shower and whatever airbrush so I come to Browology um, in San Diego and it literally lasted two weeks and it's like a beautiful color they hand do it so if you don't mind standing naked in a room with someone highly recommend do I have a boyfriend no I do not ever tried cocaine as a pre-workout I've, I've actually never done cocaine how to get started with fitness so I think this is a really good question because I know a lot of people are like how do I start so whether it's getting started on your fitness journey or getting started going to the gym or starting to track macros or starting a bulk or starting a cut or starting to build muscle honestly my answer is just do it so if you're starting your fitness journey just getting in the gym starting to make healthier food choices you don't need to make a million changes all at once because that'll be super overwhelming no matter what you're doing so make small changes right um start going get a gym membership and start going a few times a week ease into it i would also really Think about establishing goals for yourself, right, and things to work towards because I think that that's going to help you be consistent. Um, but overall, like, don't try to make huge changes all at once. Otherwise, it's not going to be sustainable and it's going to be super overwhelming. Okay, so my camera totally died when I was in the middle of my last clip before I went and got a spray tan, which is totally my fault for not charging my camera before. But we are back. Um, the tans take two to four hours to develop, which is actually really, really short, so I can, like, go train in a couple hours, which is really nice. But I'm just making some lunch, so while my food's cooking, I thought I would answer a couple more questions. And I'm actually having a really hard time choosing which ones to answer because there's so many good ones. I got a lot of questions about transitioning to intuitive eating. So I used to track my macros but want to intuitively eat. Any recommendations? So my first would be to stop overthinking it. As humans, you think about it before you started tracking macros, we were born with the innate ability to tell when we are hungry, eat, eat what our body wants and stop when we're full. Like think about before society, like put all those thoughts of like what's good and bad or what you should eat and what you shouldn't or whatever into your head. Um, you have that ability, so remember that, right? And I think the other thing is like it's you don't have to be like, okay, I'm never gonna think about another macro again, um, or I'm never gonna think about what a macro is again. I think about what I'm putting in my body. Use the knowledge that you have. Like maybe start just plugging your food in after you've already eaten everything at the end of the day, um, or stop using your food scale for most of your food and just eyeball your portions um, or take a few days a week off of tracking you know what I mean but I don't I think people get this idea of like intuitive eating it's just freaking eating like that's really all that it is and it's, remember that like you know so much more than you think you do and if you've tracked macros use that background knowledge um, to help you make decisions like have protein carbs and fat at every meal you know what I mean um, and then kind of going off of that, I got a couple questions about can you bulk or can I cut while eating intuitively? And what I'll say is it's you can, um, but I don't think it will be most effective. To bulk or cut, to bulk so put on weight, you're eating more than your body naturally wants. To cut, you have to eat less than your body naturally wants. And that's going against your body's signals, right? So eating intuitively, you're listening to your body and you're kind of 
doing those things, you're kind of trying to not listen to your body. Um, so that's the first thing. But I think also I know if I was trying to cut um, and not tracking macros, I probably would be way under eating. Um, and with a bulk or cut, you want to be slowly increasing or slowly decreasing your food. So it's going to be really, really hard to make those small, minute changes if you're just like eating intuitively. Um, so that's kind of my two cents there, but I got it. My food's probably burning over there. So I am answering check-ins on my porch. Um, but a couple more questions before I get back to things. Tips on getting your period back. How long does it take? This varies so much for every person and honestly that was like 90% of these questions I'm like I want to answer these but I can't because it totally depends per person um, so tips on getting your period back make sure that you are eating a lot of food at least at maintenance make sure your body fat levels are at a good spot I wouldn't do any cardio I'd make sure that you are prioritizing rest um, and also be patient so I know people who they can get to like a healthy weight um, or stop over exercising for like a month or two and get their period back. Some people it'll take like a year, but I think the biggest tip of them all is just to be consistent. Don't diet until you have your period back. Um, don't go doing hours of cardio, right? Um, if you want your period back, you have to make a change, right? Like if you want to see change, you have to make a change. So if you want your period back, you have to change something about what you're doing. It would be that you either have to gain weight, eat more food, train less, um, eat healthy fat that is another one make sure you're getting enough healthy fats um, so with that I'm going to eat this bowl of food which I have shredded potatoes um, spinach green beans shrimp and a whole egg and in here and I think I said spinach but work break because if you guys have not tried the diet cherry dr. pepper it is life changing. I honestly have never been like a huge diet soda person. Like I had my Monster, my Fizzy Water. But these have been a daily thing recently. No shame in my game. I'm in my bathroom right now. I have a few more check-ins to do and then I'm heading to the gym. But I totally forgot that I like didn't have any makeup on and my hair is literally a mess. So I'm getting myself together so I can like go and do things the rest of the day and not look and feel like a total bum. Like honestly, I'm totally cool not wearing makeup, but I just feel so much better and so much more together when I have like a little something on my face um, and my hair isn't just in a mop on the back of my head. But I got a few questions related to makeup-y stuff. So I got asked, um, what eyelash glue I use and I do wear fake eyelashes. I don't have them on right now um, But I use this duo glue you can just get it at Target um, And it's the clear one. Um, I use the Ardell Wispy lashes and I just look for ones that are like Pretty full and long so it looks like I have on eyelashes um, and then I got asked how many times I rewear the same ones and the glue does kind of like stick to them, so I re-wear them probably like two or three times. Like I'll wear new ones today and then tomorrow and maybe Wednesday. Um, but you do have to switch them up a decent amount. So, and before I put these on, I got asked dramatic lipstick or smoky eye. And I'm not a dramatic makeup person. Like I like the very minimal makeup look. I don't like walking in somewhere and having someone be like, Oh my god, your makeup. But if I had to choose one or the other, I would probably say um, a dramatic, or yeah, a dramatic smoky eye rather than dramatic lipstick because I have very, very thin lips. So I feel like wearing super bright lipstick just doesn't look good on me. Next tattoo, big or small. I'm a big fan of small tattoos. I will never get like a big ass tattoo anywhere on my body, but there's probably like four or five six little small ones I want. Now I'm going to finish my makeup in three, two, one. And there we are. And I also got asked what color my toothbrush was, so I have a pink toothbrush. But um, yeah, so put my hair in some braids for the gym so it tames the craziness. My eyes when they're done. See, it's not like that different, but I just feel so much better. Okay, we are 
heading out to the gym. Um, I was planning on training alone, but my friend Tegan um, wants to lift too, and we're both training back today. So we are gonna train together. Next question that I wanted to answer is what my training split is right now, um, and if I think doing like splitting up your muscle groups is better than doing like full body workouts. So right now I do two leg days. I have a push day that's chest and shoulders, um, a pull day that's back and buys, and then I have a back shoulders and tries more like accessory day. I think that it's definitely better to split up the muscle groups that you train if you can um, and to hit every muscle group that you really want to focus on one to two times per week at least. Obviously if you can only train like three days you're probably best doing a full body workout so that you can hit each of those muscle groups twice. Um, but a big thing that you want to focus on when you're trying to build muscle anywhere one, progressive overload, so increasing the weight that you're using, the reps that you're doing, your overall volume. But you also really wanna get blood pumping into those muscles. And it's gonna be really hard to do that if you're only doing like one exercise per muscle group. And if you're in the gym for hours, it's gonna be really, really hard to be exerting your full effort that whole time. So I think if you can train four to five times per week, that is best. Um, so yeah, cheers. Wish all the hashtags, likes, and tweets would find a way to get lost. Yeah, and when I pull up to the scene, I wonder what the hell is the cost. And yeah. post-workout snack and all I have in here is some Greek yogurt mixed with stevia and then I have honey nut checks frozen blueberries that I warmed up and then this stuff is so good code Lexi gets you 10% off it's the new flavor but that was such a good workout I feel like whenever I train with people it takes a lot longer and I had cardio to do after so I feel like I was gone for forever and I'm really hungry um, but one question I got asked was my favorite gluten-free snacks and I guess this could just be snacks for anyone um, but Greek yogurt with like cereal and fruit or granola and nut butter is one of my faves I love rice cakes so either making them like savory and putting um, like avocado and egg or egg whites on them or peanut butter and banana on caramel rice cakes is one of my other all-time favorites. I do like protein bars from time to time. I'm not a huge protein bar person. Um, protein cereal is one that I really like when my carbs are high enough. So just mixing like almond milk with protein powder and cereal. I love to have just like quick oats. Toast with peanut butter and banana is another one of my faves um, or like toaster waffles with cream cheese and jelly is bomb. Fruit with nut butter, like apple and peanut butter, is another one of my jams. But I am so hungry, so I'm going to eat this. And we'll see what I get into the rest of the night. Okay, we are headed to the grocery store at 8 p.m. Um, I live like right across the street, so it's super close, but I'm kind of annoyed that I have to go. But we are out of spinach and mushrooms, which I eat every single day like in my egg whites in the morning um and like basically with every meal so melissa and i both leave to 
Miami on Wednesday, so in two days, but we're like, we can't really go without those, so I volunteered to go. Um, I volunteered as tribute. Food related question. I did get asked my favorite low fiber foods, which I answered on my Instagram, and I've definitely answered on here before because there is a such thing as too much fiber. But I did also get asked about what my favorite high fiber foods are. Um, so that would be like any veggie, so like any cruciferous vegetable, Brussels sprouts, spinach, asparagus, um, and literally any vegetable is gonna have a decent amount of fiber. Fruits like apples, berries have a ton of fiber, raspberries have a ton of fiber. Um, squash, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes have a decent amount of fiber. Um, and those are all like natural sources of fiber. So even things like quinoa, beans, whole grains will have a lot of fiber. Now obviously you can get fiber through like some protein bars and like wraps that are made with some like artificial fiber stuff, but I really would recommend getting your fiber from whole food sources. So I'm a total weirdo and I'm buying sushi ginger at the grocery store. A lot of times you can find it in the Asian section. Also got asked what my spirit food is, and that's hard, because it's not like your favorite food, right? And I was gonna say pancakes, because like I could literally eat those every day, or like oats. I think oats would work, because you can make them sweet, you can make them savory, you can literally make them any way. Um, but, honestly would say I'm a box of chocolates, because you never know what you're gonna get. I'm, I can be like very, very like deep and insightful, and I can also just be like a total like, it's blogging in the middle of the grocery store. <laughs> um, if you had to give up one, what would it be? Being tan or drinking coffee? <laughs> I'm offended by this question. I'd probably give up being tan because if I couldn't have coffee, well, I guess I could live without either of them. I'm like, see, I'm wondering, I'm like, it would be really good for me to not be able to drink coffee yeah. But at the same time, like, do we really need to be tan? Yeah. Like, it's the best start to my day. Yes. I'm gonna give up being tan. Yeah, I'd probably give up being tan too, honestly. Um, ketchup or mustard? Uh, if it's Dijon mustard, then I'm picking that. But if it's regular mustard, I'm picking ketchup. Low-key same. I love Dijon and spicy brown mustard. Mm. Regular yellow mustard. Like it's good, but I would way rather have ketchup. If your name was not what it is, what would you want it to be? I wanted my name to be Chloe for like my entire life. Um, I no longer want it to be Chloe. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, I really love guy names for girls. Like I love the name Charlie for a girl. But I like Lexi. Would it, would you date a guy you could have lift at the gym? No. Like, big guys. Like, I'm very attracted to guys who are, like, tall and big. Like, I want them to be able to protect me. Snug me! You know, like, Snug me! Keep me safe! If they're on their journey, they're getting stronger, that's awesome. Um, as soon as they are stronger than I am, let's chat. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that segment is now concluded. Peace out. Okay, I'm about to make my last meal, but next question is favorite protein pump. We literally probably have like 20 tubs of protein powder, but these were the ones that were in the front, so I know they're the ones that I use the most. We have the PE Science Snickerdoodle, which I love. It's like cinnamony flavor, so like in oats, it's really, really good. Um, the Unico birthday cake, which you guys know I have used for forever. I still use it all the time, and I'm really sad because it's almost gone. Um, the Bomar Nutrition Protein Blueberry Cheesecake, which they sent me a ton of protein, and this one is really, really good. I like it in oats. Um, and then the Bomar Nutrition Protein Hot Chocolate is really, really good just in almond milk. Um, and you can warm it up too, but it tastes just like hot chocolate. So 
this I like to drink and I'm about to make my oats for the night um so I'm gonna eat those and I'll answer another couple questions before I head to bed okay so a couple more questions before I wrap up this vlog for the night I got asked if I ever struggled with binge eating disorder um so obviously a lot of you guys know I struggled with anorexia for a really long time but I really did struggle with it all so over exercise was part of my eating disorder um for a couple years of it the whole duration was like five years I did struggle with binge eating for a long time kind of towards um the later end so probably like the last two years and I think um for me it wasn't as much of an emotional thing as it was like my body was starving so I would eat something and I literally could not stop um I, I don't anymore I don't really ever get urges to binge or anything anymore because like I said I think a big part of it was just that I deprived myself for so long so when I started letting myself eat um I couldn't stop which is kind of scary but but for anyone who's trying to get over it um binge eating i would say you honestly have to just truly stop depriving yourself not get into like binge restrict cycles um because for me that's really what it was and just kind of changing up routines so like for me um it always happened like late at night so i had to change up like kind of how i went about my my meal like stay out of the kitchen things like that have um, like a cup of tea or something after but I did struggle with that for like a year year and a half um and I guess I just don't talk about it much but it's not really an issue at all anymore um next one I got asked if I was still planning on getting my breast augmentation and yes I am um it is scheduled and in the books pretty shortly let me know if you guys want me to like document it or talk more about it on here. I know there's tons of like breast augmentation videos and stuff, but I would be happy to share. Best advice to overcome um, an eating disorder mentally like yours in the past. And I get asked this literally every single day. Like, how did you recover from your eating disorder? And just like anything, there is no magic secret. It's not like this is what I did and I recovered. Otherwise, everyone would be recovered. It is, I think for me, it was one realizing that I could not have the life I wanted with an eating disorder. I could not be restricting my food and continue losing weight and and have friendships, relationships, have a success, success in school, I guess at the time, but have a successful career, go out, be social, anything. Um, if I was so focused on my eating disorder because that consumes your whole life So I think that was the first step and then doing shit that is hard You can't wait for things to get easier You can't there's not going to be a day that you wake up and all of a sudden it's easier to eat certain foods or easier To deal with a thought of gaining weight or easier to challenge um, Your eating disorder thoughts and tendencies and behaviors. It's never going to get easier. It is not you have to decide that you're willing to put in the work and even when the work is not easy you have to remember why you're doing it and continue to fucking do it because the only way it's going to get easier is if you do it over and over and over again so push yourself to eat push yourself to eat things that are challenging push yourself out of your routine um and remember why someone else it has to be for you but that would be my advice um i'm really really passionate about that like seriously my only answer is just do it just do it. You'll thank yourself later. Um, you've never heard anyone who recovered from eating disorder and is like, I wish I didn't recover. You've never heard that, you know? Anyways, um, that is what I have for this vlog. So I am going to get ready for bed, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next one.